Good morning students, I am Dr. Harpreet. I will take you through a tour on how to go about reading a shoulder MRI. Musculoskeletal imaging provides a window into the patient's body through which the surgeon can look at the disease structures without even giving an incision onto the patient's body. After a good comprehensive history and a thorough clinical examination, imaging is the next step in ladder which helps the surgeon in making a diagnosis and prognosticating the patient about the disease he has. Advanced imaging techniques like CT scan and MRI have helped the surgeon a lot uh, in this process. CT scan helps the orthopedic surgeon look at the bony structures and MRI is extremely useful in looking at the soft tissue structures, the muscles, the tendons and the intra-articular intra uh, structures. So I will be talking about shoulder MRI, how to read a shoulder MRI. So the first question is when to order a shoulder MRI and whether to order a plain shoulder MRI or order a shoulder MR arthrogram. So uh, we as an orthopedic surgeon order a shoulder MRI for the following conditions. Uh, first, the most important indication is a rotator cuff tear. When you are suspecting a cuff tear or an impingement, you can uh, order it for a instability lesion where when you are thinking of a labral tear or pathology or when you have repaired a, a rotator cuff tear and you think the clinical picture goes towards a re-tear. In this slide, you can see uh, some numbers in brackets. Those are the level of indication by the American Co uh, College of Radiology with 9 being the highest level of indication and 1 being the lowest. Uh, shoulder M. Uh, when you read a MRI, you have to formulate, you have to go in a sequence. You have to formulate a sequence in how to go uh, about reading. So you have to be comprehensive. Uh, you have to see, uh, you have to first find out what is anterior, what is posterior, whether you are going from medial to lateral, lateral to medial, top to bottom, so that you know in what sequence the MR images are process, uh, proceeding. So first we talk about how when you look at the axial sections, how they look to you, what you are looking at. So axial images usually will start from top to bottom. So what will help you identify uh, whether these are the upper uh, sections or the lower sections and which is anterior and what is posterior. So if you see the acromion, the AC joint and the clavicle in the first section, you are going from top to bottom. Now what is, uh, if you are going from top to bottom, what is anterior and what is posterior? So in the upper sections, try and look for the coracoid process. So coracoid process is the lighthouse of shoulder MRI. If you find the coracoid, you will be able to uh, make out the anatomy. So which structures are where. Coracoid is a structure which is in the upper uh, uppermost sections and at the anterior part of the shoulder. So where you look, where you see the sh uh, coracoid process, that, that part is anterior in the uh, axial section and uh, the opposite part would be the posterior. So here you can see the acromion, the clavicle. So I will proceed with, I first want to see which is anterior, which is posterior. So I will go in a bit downward direction so that I can look at the coracoid. So here I can see the coracoid process. Here it is the coracoid process. So this is anterior and this is posterior. This helps me find out which is anterior, which is posterior. I can see what is medial because my uh, coracoid, the glenoid would be medial. So this is medial and this is where the, uh, the muscles is, this is lateral. So this clarifies my, uh, uh, my anatomy. So what I am looking at and then uh, I can go about reading the MRI properly. So going back uh, when we started from the topmost sections. So in the topmost section you see the acromion, the clavicle as we go down you will see the, the spine of the scapula, the, uh, the coracoid we were seeing, uh, we can see the, the labrum also here. 
So, on axial sections what is important to look for pathology is your labral pathologies, the tears of the labrum, the tears of the anterior or the posterior labrum. So, when you are looking for a Bankart's lesion which is a tear of anterior antero inferior labrum, you want to look at the inferior sections. So, what are the inferior sections? When the coracoid disappears from the axial sections, that means you have come in the inferior section, you have gone below the equator. So, if the, uh, the anterior labrum is missing or torn in those sections, that means that there is a Bankart's lesion. So, if this, this is the anterior labrum, this should be firmly attached to my glenoid. So, if it is not attached here, if it is found here or somewhere, that means uh, the glenoid labrum is torn anteriorly and that is your Bankart's lesion. Uh, another important thing you look for in your axial sections is your uh, is your uh, hill sacs lesion. So hill sacs lesion is always superiorly. So you have to look at the post the postro lateral aspect of the humeral head in the superior sections. So at or above the level of coracoid, if you see if there is a dip here, this is your hill sacs lesion. So, another important structure to see is when you stop seeing the coracoid, there will be your supraspinatus muscle going here just attaching on the lesser tuberosity. So, this is my biceps groove, this is my biceps lesion, this is my GT, this is my LT. So, this muscle is my subscapularis muscle which is attaching on the lesser tuberosity. Here is my posterior cup, the supra and the infraspinatus. So, if there is a tear of the subscapularis, the muscle will be lying somewhere here or here not attaching on the LT. So, this is what you look for in the, anti, uh, in the axial section. So, going down, going good labrum, anterior labrum, posterior labrum and the biceps tendon, you can see some edema around the biceps tendon. So, axial, what is the checklist in the axial sections you want to look for? Os acromiale, I will talk about it later, the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, biceps tendon in the biceps, biceptal groove, if it is dislocated, the biceps tendon, it is not lying in the groove, 